Hey everyone, welcome to episode 26 of Horf Plays Resonant Rise 3. Uh, as you can see, I've made a few changes around the place, so I just wanted to go over them really quick. One, I reworked this setup a little bit. I added a second Thaumium Golem because the first one was not even keeping up. If you notice, I have an Essence Berry setup down there too, which is great. Because now I have uh, tons of Essence Berries. Yeah, I have like 190 right now. I can just uh, stuff a bunch of these in my mouth, and, oh yeah, mm. oh yeah, yeah. So I've been starved for experience pretty much since I started. Uh, as you know, I die a lot, but now, oh my god, I've got, got almost 60 levels worth of experience in there. Now, I added a few more of these travel anchors, so you've seen this one and this one, you've seen this one. This one takes you out by the enchanter. This one takes you out to the farm, and then there's one more in the deep six that takes you out to the nether area. Nether portal, that's what you call it. <laughs> I love these tra travel anchors so much. In fact, I think it's about time to build a staff of traveling if we can. So let's see. Staff of traveling. I've been preparing for this. No, come on. So two dark steel, that's easy enough, and an ender crystal. Ender crystal is a soul vial, a vibrant crystal, soul vial of an enderman. Well, I happen to have made some soul vials and went out enderman hunting last night. <coughs> Excuse me. And I got three of them, so I'll just take one of them. Actually, we'll just put them back on the... Well, we're going to have to... Is an enchanting recipe? What is it again? Staff of Traveling. I think we're going to have to make a couple machines. New machines. So, Ender Crystal. Yeah, we're going to have to make something called the Soul Binder. Let me see if I can make this. Uh... Nope, I need more Vibrant Alloy. Well, that's easy enough. Let me get the Vibrant Alloy and let's make the Soul Binder because we're going to need it. So I made some vibrant alloy. I've got the nuggets. I should be able to make a vibrant crystal now. Yes, I can. Excellent. And now we want to make a soul binder. So a soul binder. Let's see. What kind of nonsense do we know? Oh, goodness. Look at all that. So we need... Luckily, I made that cleaver, huh? Because we have skeleton skull, a zombie head, a creeper head, and an enderman head. I fortunately have all of those. I have the solarium. The only thing we need is a machine frame, which is really simple to make. Let's make the soul binder. And do we happen to have... Unfortunately, that's my only creeper head, and I was going to use it to make a wireless charger, but... I suppose that can wait. That's a convenience item. Um, ooh, we don't really have capacitor for it. I'll make one later. Uh, we don't really use it enough to worry about it too much. Now remember, this whole wall is hot, so I can pretty much pop this guy anywhere. And yep, he should get a charge. And we just want to throw a soul vial and a vibrant crystal and... Oh! Well, that we should be able to handle, right? Let's see. Give me 10 levels, please. That was one level of XP as far as what I have stored. Because, the, you know, the higher your level, the more XP it is. And stuff. <laughs> so, Soulbinder, use player XP. Beautiful. Alright, yeah. <laughs> I don't need to put capacitors in here. This thing's plenty fast. And the end result is... An empty soul vial and an ender crystal. Perfect. Now, I'm stop it. I stopped the quarry just because, well, if you can tell, we're getting a little full. Iron. Better make a stack of this, huh? Silicon. And, no, not silicon. Silly. Good thing, because we don't have much silicon. Obsidian. And coal powder. And I was going to say, we have to have coal powder. Everybody has coal powder. Right? Alright, let's get a little bit of dark steel together. Uh, we'll reuse the soul vial. Let me just uh, 
throw it on my tool bag for now. I made I made this electric bow. It's pretty ghetto, but I figured I might. And I'm traditionally pretty bad about using ranged weapons, so I think it's it's time to learn how to play a little bit of Minecraft like an adult. Um, staff of traveling, please. Sweet. All right, and let's grab this thing. This this like charges so slow. It's a joke. Let's go down here. Let's charge this guy up. Wow. 250,000 RA. When held, travel anchors and ender IO blocks become visible and can be activated with right click. Shift right click will teleport the player a short distance. So. Okay, perfect. So, even when I'm not standing on one of these things, as long as I'm holding my, my staff of traveling, I am good to go. Now, I want to check out this, uh. Okay, that's pretty dope, actually. It kind of drains it fast. Don't get me out of there. Okay. I love this thing. This thing is kind of the bee's knees. And, yeah, I've already drained it, though, so... <laughs> I need to probably not be so eager. Cool thing is, if I have a flux capacitor, I'll be able to really have fun with that. That plus a jetpack is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Let's go to the bedroom. I love it. Alright, I may have mentioned I have the quarry off because, well, we're pretty much have a glut of resources. Look how many diamonds we have, for example. Yeah, that's 513. God damn, that's a lot of diamonds. More than we have gold, I bet. I know we have 800 gold. We have so many resources, and actually with the quintupling system, it's still pretty slow. So it's taken a while to... It's got a lot of ore to chew through. 1600 freaking copper, god, good lord. So, one problem that's kind of been growing, and the other reason we shut off the core is because our enemy system is getting pretty pounded, and we're out of channels, so there's no way we can pop another drive on here or anything like that so I've kind of been lazy about it but I think it might be time to relocate our ME system I think uh, we're gonna have to get serious about applied energistics now and we can't just uh, jury rig it the way it is here alright well step one we're gonna move this stuff downstairs and I need to be able to do that without resorting to I really don't want to carry a bunch of discs and all these pieces, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, get a little bit of sawdust here, and we're going to just make a box of sawdust. Oh. Pulp. It's wood pulp. Make a box of wood pulp. I forget how you make this. It's pretty simple. It comes from trees. We're going to make one... So I think two cardboard boxes is plenty. You really don't want to be shuffling around too many of these. Alright, so instead of having to deal with every individual disc in this drive, we're just going to do that. And same there. Alright, now we're just going to take our fragile boxes down to... Uh, see, I got, we got a new room. Alright. And we're just going to put them, like, say here and here take the boxes off all right now we gotta go grab some more stuff so how about we grab the power oops let's grab the power acceptor and i wonder if this whole thing will go into oh my god yes hardware boxes are pretty sweet they're from mechanism and they are pretty sweet okay this is a problem I'll just put them... Alright, this one has the block cable bus. This is the energy acceptor. Energy acceptor will probably... Where's the power? Here's the battery. Mm. Energy acceptor will probably be somewhere in the middle. I might actually put it underground eventually, but for now... Uh... 
What else do we have? Uh, ore processing, we can just leave B for now. Uh, but, hint, if you want to move this guy without, without having to deal with all the components flying everywhere, try putting it in one of those. That's what I'm going to be doing. If I move it, I might keep it up here. But this is supposed to be something I never... In this is supposed to be automation, so I probably will end up... Uh, gotta be really careful not to wrench the actual machine itself. Alright. And I guess we'll grab this ender chest for good measure. So basically what we're going to do is move all of our inventory stuff downstairs, set it up there, similar to how we had it set up here, and then move on to the next step. Alright, so I had to temporarily, of course I forgot, I need some cable, so I had to temporarily move some of this. But uh, basically what we're going to do is run cable, hoping I can run this under the travel anchor. Um, yeah, so let's just not touch the travel anchor. Ow! Sorry, kitty attack. It happens. So, I should be able to run this under the travel anchor, right? Like so. Perfect. And then, this line was already moved in here for... I used to have a fluid, ME fluid system in here, which we're going to integrate into what we're building, of course. So I'm just going to run the cable. I love when the monsters fall out of the world. It's so... What's the word I'm looking for? It's so redeeming. I haven't actually figured out how I'm going to deal with the ME dense cables and the uh, mixing with the power conduits, but we'll figure it out. There's a dense conduit, but we got to be careful about colors and 32 channels per side and all that good stuff. So, But for now... I'm gonna run this bad boy up to there, and we'll just seal this back up. I'll make this room look nice later. Um, there's something. There's an. I, if you haven't known, if you didn't know, there's an item I'm kind of waiting for before I make everything look nice. Uh, two items really. I have the means to make one. The other one. Still a little bit of work involved. All right. So I'm gonna move the energy acceptor here for now. And then we're going to box up these drives one more time. And we'll just uh, put them here, I guess, for now. Stop it. Stop it. All right. So that's what we have so far. And then uh, we're going to... So basically we're just recreating what we had. And then we're going to get fancy. So we'll put our monitor up. Alright, good enough. Alright, now I've dug space for a line from here all the way over to here where that gold block is. And now I'm going to... And some of this is kind of newish to me, so bear with me. I'm going to basically upgrade this glass cable. Uh, well, and can I use green now? Well, probably not. Alright, so basically I'm turning my just plain glass cable into covered cable. Let's see, I should have 40. Cool. And then I'm actually going to color it green. So green. Eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-four. That's good enough. And then we'll say uh, floral powder. Powder. Floral green powder. Come on. Give me all that. Alright, and then the last step is I believe we just take uh, the screen and then put it, the cables around it like so. Alright, so we've got 40 green cables. So basically this is going to be the 
the green line. I'm basically going to try to break up my different usage of different sides into different colors. So it's going to go from here to here. And it better connect right there. Oops. Alright, and green should not interfere with any other color. So if I ran a red cable next to this one, my understanding is they won't interfere with each other. So that's good. Alright, this may not work again. This is the first time I've done this, but I believe what I need now is dense. So we'll take four pieces of dense cable, green. Okay, well how do you make this stuff? Right, so we'll take two dense cable. Oh. One, two, three, four. Oh, and we have to recolor it? That's a biatch? Um, any more of the green left? Is it only going to let us recolor it if we have eight? Important questions. Yes, it's only going to let us recolor it if we have eight, which is pretty lame. Uh, so we may have to wait to recolor these. That's okay. And then I want to make two P2P, P2P tunnels. Um, for ME, there's a light P2P tunnel? That's interesting. Alright, so two of these. Now I think the way this is supposed to work is I can, like, uh, put... So I'll put a dense cable here. Dense cable has 32 channels. It's connected. Put a dense cable here. Dense cable has 32 channels. Actually, I think I might need to drop it with one. Put a dense cable here. And then I should be able to slap. Okay, so I had it right the first time. Um, basically, we want to slap a PGP tunnel there. And we want to slap a P2P tunnel here. We have a dense cable there. We have a not so dense cable there. So, let's try this again. P2P tunnel. Dense cable. Again. Uh, what we want actually is dense cable, P2P tunnel here, and then the green line here. That's what we really want. No? No. Like this, and like this. I think that's what we want. Okay. It only took me about five tries. So. Uh, we just have to link those two, and then, of course, one other very important part. We need to make... ME control there. Oh, they changed the... It looks different now. We need to make an ME controller. And what are we missing? Good lord almighty. Skystone block. Um, I know we have Skystone itself, so... I guess we just smelt some Skystone. Sure, why not? Yeah, I'll do... I'll do 12. That should be enough for three of these. If I need to go back and get more sky Skystone, I can go get a ton. No problem. Alright, now this is going to be interesting, because we're going to set this to furnace only, and we're going to throw these in here. It's going to have nowhere to go. It might get sucked into the node, but... It's getting sucked into the node. It's going to make uh, retrieving it more fun. Let's just break this node. Let's break it up from up here. Um, are you still? Are the items still in there? They can't be. No. All right. Well, let me get my sky st sky stone. Make the semi controller and go from there. Alright, so I broke down and I made enough of this tense cable to color it green. 
So what I have here is I have a P2P tunnel on this side, P2P tunnel on this side, one piece of the dense cable that holds 32 channels. Uh, that's going to be an ME controller, obviously, and this is going to provide 32 channels to this area. And then these P2P tunnels, if I understand them correctly, will, even though this only holds 8 channels, it's going to tunnel the 32 channels through this 8 channel pipe, whatever you want to call it. So it's like a tunnel, basically. Loaded setting. Okay, I think I want to shift right click on one of these. Saved. And then just simply right click on the other. Loaded. I think these two are linked now. So if I put down... Yeah, I have a rain muffler down now, otherwise you'd be hearing probably a lot of rain right now. So now if I put down the ME controller right there, it should connect. Alright, it's connected, and it should, I think, be providing 32 channels even via this thin little pipe. And there's actually probably a good way we can tell, which is, uh, actually smart cable's not going to tell us. I made this thing called a network tool. I don't know how it works, but let's see. Network details. Right. Well, it tells us how much RF we're using. That's good. Alright, well, I think we're just going to have to test it by connecting up another side. So let me just seal this up, and then we're going to run... Oh no, I don't want that D to be in there. Nobody wants the D. Cool. Well, it looks cool anyway, and I think it's going to rock. So we should be able to actually... Uh, to my gold project back now and be like, you know what? Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it didn't like that. I think I have to run the dense cable. I think I move, have to move everything up one. I'm going to give that a try and see if it works. Alright, well I had to fiddle with this for quite a bit to get it to work. But uh, I finally got this P2P tunnel to work. So I put the P2P right on here. I put the energy acceptor here. And I made sure that the energy acceptor was actually feeding energy into the P2P tunnel. It needs to be powered. So that was the thing that was really throwing me off. Now the cool thing is, all this stuff is turned on. I got rid of all the cables that were here. All the energy cables, I don't need them. That P2P tunnel handles it all. That's the only connection I need right there. That goes in the energy acceptor and the ME controller. Uh, P2P tunnel is bringing all the power the ME network needs to this side of the of the building. So we've got eight drives. We've got more than eight. Uh, channels being used and it's working like a charm so we can really upgrade our system now and scale this thing up uh, probably going to start with uh, more discs well who knows there's a lot of stuff we can do uh, soon we're gonna be able to do some really awesome stuff let me figure out what we're gonna do next oh I know what we're gonna do we're probably gonna try to wire uh, this back up to the house Let's see what we need to do to make that happen. So I'm standing on another side. Basically, uh, I'm using the the back side of this ME controller, and I'm using blue cable. And so these little bits here, you might notice, are quartz fiber. Quartz fiber is supposed to pass energy, but not information. So I'm trying to keep like a I don't know if it matters or not, but I'm trying to keep a break between the green and the blue and all the other colors. Uh, but you do need to run power to these P2P tunnels. I don't know if I showed you how these work, but basically you shift right click on one. And it was so hard for me to figure out, I don't know why. But now this is like the source. And now you can right click on this m memory card to as many destinations as you want. So, we ran this normal covered cable, it's not dense, up into our poor house, which is like torn apart right now. And we've got another P2P tunnel here, and I'm going to hit memory card, loaded. All right, now I should be able to run a dense cable here, and it connects to this interface. Oh my god, and it already worked. I was going to test it by throwing a block of gold in there and see if it showed up, see if it disappeared, and it, it, it's gone. So, oh my god. And this thing has been quietly working away <laughs> with whatever ores it had left to process. Yeah, it looks like it's done now, but... 
Okay, fantastic. So, <coughs> now we have a blue line in here that's 32 channels, so we can run whatever ME stuff we need to run up through here. And there is an ME conduit. I don't know all the rules for how it works, but we might end up running ME conduit or dense ME conduit in the walls. I'll have to think about that. Uh, another thing I want to do is get another monitor up here. And if you go, if we go back down to, if we go down here, you can see I've got the drives, the drive tower set up. I put those two fluid discs up here, and I put our fluid terminal here. So now we're running items and fluid in the same system. And this is now, apparently, it looks like, connected to this which is sweet. So uh, now I can uh, run another monitor up here and I can run whatever ME imp like I could set the import buses, buses back up maybe that's what I'll do. Alright let's see I wanna go here, here, here. I wanna put I'm at a crafting terminal I really love the crafting terminal and what's funny is if you use the blue cables, it gives it this blue tint. I tried the one downstairs, and it had, like, this green tint that I thought was kind of hideous looking, but I actually don't mind this blue tinted one so much. Uh, the other alternative is just to use normal Fluix cable, which I might, if we have it, I might actually do. Um, yeah. Uh, the colored stuff is, it gives the monitors that tint, apparently. I didn't know that. I learned that today. Oops, come on now. And it also uh, is supposed to keep different colors that are supposed to basically stop you from connecting to each other. So I'll put the monitor back down. I'm going to grab, hopefully I still have oh, export bus. we got two export buses. Alright, we're going to get this hooked back up. Oops. Alright, we'll start with this one. Err. Sometimes it helps to put the bus down first and then the cable. Right, and we're going to do the same over here. So, export bus. Obviously not magnetized. And then the cable. Okay, what did I just get? Nothing. Okay, cool. So we have two export buses, and now we can slap the monitor back on, like so. And uh, now I should be able to be like, okay, what ores? What ores have been languishing while we've been uh, rearranging our system? Now, mind you, all this stuff is downstairs. Why don't we give the ores we really like a head start, huh? So we'll do gold. I always like to get my gold processed, so why don't you process that? And it looks like it's getting processed. Great. And we have cards for this as well. Capacity cards. I should be able to slam two in here two in here, and now they have a full nine. Heh heh heh. Um, and then ores I kind of want or need, I can just throw in as I, as I need to, like Yellorite. Yellorium. Yellor... Oh, I must have processed it all already. Well, anyway, you get the idea. I can put the different ores in here, like, uh, iron, I guess is always a good one, right? Uh, 4,000 iron ore, good god. So I could just throw iron in here for now. And let it process the 4,000 iron ore I've freaking quarried so far. And, alright, so we've got the uh, ore quintupling box going again. We've got a terminal up here. Even though the ME is down here. So the controller is starting to do work. Alright folks, so I figured I'd 
let you watch an actual research every now and again, so well, I'm not going to tell you exactly what I'm researching other than, than to say it's relevant to this episode. So we need to go from Fabrico to Vacuous in two steps. According to my handy dandy connector, ooh, three steps is going to be the best. Ooh, and it's using Telem, which I know is uh, kind of glitchy. Um, I'm actually going to turn the Telem off and see if there's another three steps. Alright, Humanus, Luckrum, Luckrum and Famis, Fam Fames, whatever. Whatever you want to call it. So let's go ahead and uh, go that route. So uh, a little bit of Humanus, a little bit of Luckrum, and a little bit of fa fa the hunger All right, the line is drawn. Cool. Now we're gonna go from vacuous. Now I've got the website companion open. I'm, I've linked it in the previous episode. And then we're gonna go from vacuous to ma machina. I love trying to pronounce this garbage. And then uh, two steps minimum. Um, yeah, two steps minimum. Oh, that's easy. That's air and modus. So, vacuous goes to air. Air goes to modus. Alright, and then from ma machina, machina, whatever, to potentia. Potentia is easy to say. I like that one. Instrumentium and ordo. So, instrumentium, ordo, boom! Arcane crafting terminal. This is a little bit of Thomic Energistics. You have discovered that using primal aspects to bind a terminal to an arcane work table allows you to imbue the terminal with the work table's ability to craft arcane items. We need 10 of every aspect, we need a calculation processor. We need an arcane work table, that's interesting. And an Emmy terminal. <coughs> Excuse me. Um let's do that. So I think we already have we don't have a terminal, but we have most of the stuff to make one, I believe. I had to make some extra screens to make the crafting terminal, so we have that. As far as the arcane crafting table goes, we can uh, honestly just take this one. Let me get my axe out. Hold on. I've just been using a uh, heavily enchanted Viroxes. It's some weird metallurgy nether metal. So what was the other thing we needed? Oh, calculation processor. That's a piece of cake. I should have a ton. I only have 18. Still enough. Oh, you know what? This is not going to work. So, we're actually going to have to make a Thalmcraft table. <laughs> I have to make this on an arcane work table, so... Wood... If I remember right, it's like slabs. Yeah, I love hearing about zombies that tried to swim in lava. I don't care. Alright, table. So, let's put this here. Put this here. I think you just... I think you just uh, smack it with a wand. Cool. Okay, now it's an arcane work table. Great. Now I can pick this one back up. And we're going to be like, uh, yo, yo. Take this work table, this processor, and this terminal. Sweet. And you know what? Before I do this, it's time to put on the sanguine, the sanguine suit. It'll give me that discount. Yeah, it gave me like a 1v discount, whatever. Arcane crafting terminal. Beautiful. Grab my wand. Put the sanguine suit away. And let's go down to our terminal room down here. We need one more Fluix. Whatever, we'll use a smart cable. Put that there. And then... Oh yeah. Now we can do... Oh, that's sweet, dude. Now we can uh, drop our wand here. And we can do our arcane, our arcane crafting. 
connected to our AE ME network. That is so sweet. Oh my god, Thomic Energistics is going to be like my favorite mod in the world, I have a feeling. All right, well, perfect. That's going to Oh my god. So now we have arcane crafting, fluid. All right, you know what? This is Mr. Nitpicky here. Oops. All that. All right, so smart cable goes back. I want to put the arcane crafting terminal right next to this crafting terminal, the fluid terminal here. I know it's not a big deal, but you know, cool. All right, excellent, excellent, excellent. So normal crafting, arcane crafting, and fluids. Dude, this is so sweet. And that's gonna about wrap it up for this episode. So we had a very productive episode. We turned our little brain dead, tiny, uh, uh, cramped AE system into this amazing thing. <laughs> so, and we're just getting started. Uh, getting the ME controller in place and getting some of this, uh, some of these extra channels opened up is just the prelude to some really, really awesome stuff. Anyway, that is all the time we have for this episode, so... Thanks everyone for watching, I really do appreciate it. As always, if you have comments or feedback, uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Uh, until next time, have a great one, take it easy. <laughs> Bye.